All right, so this is going to be a tutorial on the new socket orientation system uh, released with version 2.9. All right, so what is you know the purpose of this new system? So let's just hop into play mode right quick, and we'll see that as soon as this pistol is socketed, it has some defined position and rotation relative to the socket. And we want you know an easier way of defining uh, where it goes. Uh, the current system uses a you know transform, which uses you know axis alignment with the socket, which is kind of hard to set up. So let's say let's remove this and go back into play mode and see what happens. All right, so now it's in a different position. So what position is it in if you don't give it a pose? So just looking at the transform, we'll see that essentially it has the default transform values. So if you do nothing and your object is socketed, your position and rotation, you know, locally or relative to the socket is going to be zero. All right, so let's say you want to, you know, change what that is if the default transform values, you know, don't work for your object and this socket. All right, so we want to first assign the socket field here that we will be applying a pose to or orientation to and we have a little helper button here that will try to locate the closest one so you don't have to drag and drop it. And we'll see that I found this small socket here when I pressed it. And it's going to warn us now that the pose tag field is not assigned. So I will double click into the socket here and assign the pose tag field. And this is essentially a unique identifier uh, that the socketable will use to look up orientations for you know, various socket types in case you had more than one for some reason, say a backpack or a holster. And so just keep in mind that the socketable object will save this tag. So if you, for some reason you had to change this in the future, you would have to change all of your socketable objects that reference it. So keep that in mind and try to give it, you know, a descriptive name up front uh, to save yourself trouble in the long run. So just for demonstration purposes, I'll just name it small socket and then come back to my socketable component. And you'll see that we have a few buttons here now show up. And the scale buttons are showing up because the small socket has scaling enabled, which means it's going to scale an object down based on its size, which is useful for something like a backpack inventory or larger objects need to scale down. Um, so we want to apply this socket scale, which would scale the object down to the size it would be as if it was scaled down in play mode. And we want to do this first so that when we save the pose, scaling has already taken place. That way we don't get any minor offsets uh, that might show up if it was not scaled when we save the pose. So let's apply the pose, uh, sorry, apply the socket scale first. And then we can decide, you know, what we want it to look like when it is socketed. So this orientation seems fine. And once you've got it where you want it and rotated where you want it, just press save. And you'll see now the poses array has increased by one. Uh, we have the socket tag, small socket with local position and local, you know, rotation value values here. And then if we go into play mode, we'll see that, we'll, well, hopefully <laughs> it applies when it lands and it does. And just one thing to keep in mind quickly for testing purpose, uh, sockets default to grabbable must be held true to require you know the hand to be holding it when it enters the trigger zone. Um, if that is enabled on yours and you're trying to test and it's just falling through, make sure you find this field and turn it off uh, for testing um, and put it back the way it was if you want you know the hand to have to hold it before it can go in. As you'll see if I enable it it's just going to fall through. So just keep that in mind when you're testing this. And that's pretty much it. So just a reminder clear out socket orientation if you were using it before. If you weren't using it before it starts off as empty and you don't have to worry about it. And then we can now show off a scenario where we want an object 
to go into two different sockets. So here I have a holster. You know, perhaps this will be by your waist, and which means we're going to want a different orientation. So I'll assign the holster to the socket, and we'll see again, I need to give this holster a pose tag. And then coming back to my socketable component again, and you'll see that those scaling fields do not show up because the holster does not scale uh, its held objects. And um, this is one reason why it's useful to have your you know objects already as prefabs. So I can quickly just revert my scale here back to its original size. Press move to socket. It's going to move it towards the socket as if it was a child with default transform values. And because the holster is facing upwards, I need to rotate the pistol facing down. And I'll go ahead and scale my ring up so I can see where it is. Uh, uh, let's see, I want to scale it up to 1.7, which is what it's going to do in play mode. All right, so now we can position it a little better now that the ring is visible. Uh, the demo holster, you know, it scales to zero when nothing is in the trigger zone. All right, so that looks good enough. Go ahead and press save pose, and you'll see that I now have a pose for my holster. And let's just make sure grabbable must be held is off for testing. We can pull the pistol up now, let it fall in, and see what happens. And you may notice that it's not landing where we set it precisely because, again, the old method of orientation only allowed you to have a single orientation. I had to have some custom code or, say, an additional socket. So let me just trash this demo holster orientation component, and there you'll see it, it shifted down just a little bit, which is where we had assigned it to earlier. Now, just one more thing of note is if you, you know, save the pose again for an existing uh, pose tag, it's going to update. It won't add a new entry. So you'll see here that as I'm moving it around and pressing save, it's simply updating the existing entry. So you don't have to worry about it adding additional slots as you're moving it around and testing the positions you want it to be in. And that is pretty much it. So just to recap, Make sure you find and assign your socket. If your socket has scaling, make sure to, let me just, if your socket has scaling, make sure to apply the socket scale so the object scales down to the size it's going to be in when it lands inside that socket before you save your pose. And you can use reset scale if you want to bring it back to 111, which your grabbable object should be in general. And then, you can assign you know, each socket a tag, and for each socket and socketable pair, you can assign the poses. And that about wraps it up. Uh, thanks for watching, and good luck.